From the campus studios of Saarland University, this is Ropecast, a lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Hello, listeners, and welcome to another Ropecast, our podcast for advanced learners of English. With me in the studio is Peter Tischer. Hello. Hi. Peter, um, we were talking about time recently, and um, I think it's really good that our listeners spend time uh, picking up on our podcasts. Yeah, invest time. As we said, we were talking about this metaphor, money stands for time, time is money, and exactly. all the expressions that go with it. Yeah. But I was thinking about that, and I have an expression for you. Time passes. Yeah. Now, the word yeah. pass doesn't sound to me like it has anything to do with the metaphor of money. M money, well, yeah, it doesn't really pass. It seems to go away sometimes. <laughs> but I would associate that with money. Time passes. Yeah. It's sort of more like a movement. Exactly. I think the other basic concept that we use in our societies, Western societies anyway, with reference to time, is uh, time is a moving object. It's objectified. There are lots of metaphors based on that. And it's moving. It's coming towards us. We are facing the future. Right. And yeah. we're sometimes uh, looking back. Yeah. In hindsight. Right. Uh, time flies. Yes. If you're having fun. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, the time will come when? Such and such. Uh -huh. the case? The time will arrive. Yeah. Or the time has arrived. Time for action has arrived. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and what happens to us all the time on this podcast, we're short of time, <laughs> we're running short. And above all, we look forward to something. Which is something good, yeah. but it's yeah. something that'll come towards us. Exactly. Yeah. Automatically. Yeah. Which is a little bit less than, you know, money doesn't come to us automatically. <laughs> no, not for most of us. <laughs> uh, so we, we're, so we're, we can say that one concept may have, say, two governing metaphors. Exactly. Two, two, two or even more, depending. There basically, are... once you learn expressions or sort of that have to do with the same topic, you sort of have to think, okay, there's one metaphor that goes around with this, these expressions, yeah. another one with these expressions. So nope. time is a moving object and money. One that occurs to me, and we, we don't want to get in that today because it would be just too complex, would be love. There are about a dozen different ways of visualizing love. Mm -hmm. and that's yeah, that would be a topic on its own. Oh definitely. <laughs> yeah. But um what we what we're saying here about time is that in our kind of society we see time as a line. It's linear. Yeah. It's a moving thing. Well isn't it always? Well, I don't think so. I think there are societies still in the world where they see time cyclically. That uh -huh. is, you know, things come around with in at regular intervals, the seasons, mm -hmm. uh, the festivals, um, mm -hmm. the changes in the weather. I mean, these are all cyclical. Mm -hmm. And what follows from that is if you if you have a cyclical view of time, mm -hmm. where is progress? Okay. Our idea of progress. You know, we it's so deeply embedded we don't really think anymore, but we think the future is going to be better. Uh-huh. Um, the economy depends on expansion. It's always more and more and more. Uh -huh. And if we don't get more, we think something has gone badly wrong. Okay. Now, here's a bold idea. Right. Do you think that the fact that English is has become basically the world language, has that influenced the world's idea, for example, about the future, that this will always bring progress? I think there are a lot of people who want to persuade us of this. Uh -huh. uh, since the, the um, economic system that is dominant depends on expansion, depends on more and more and more. Mm -hmm. And of course, our crises, which do occur from time to time, are reminders that this may be um, an impossible... Uh, it, it would be impossible to continue with this indefinitely into the future. You can't mm -hmm. just go on expanding in a world which has limited resources, etc. However, I sure hope that our listeners will make progress in the English language <laughs> by listening to our podcast. They will have a chance to do that again in two weeks from now. But again, we are running out of time. 
Please, listeners, tune in in two weeks again. By the way, this will be our 100th podcast. Ah, yes. So this will be a very special one. For now, thanks for listening. Thanks for spending the time with us, folks, and uh, looking forward to giving you another episode of Ropecast. Bye-bye. Bye. You've been listening to Ropecast, brought to you by Saarland University, featuring Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial. Mm-hmm.